call the um, Springfield Local Board of Education special meeting work session to order, please. And at this time, Mr. Adams, would you call roll? Ms. Terry? Yes, I'm here. Mr. Ray? Here. Mr. Petrie? Here. Mrs. Frola? Yeah, here. Mr. Hofer? Here. At this time, let's uh, appreciate the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item four, citizens comment on agenda items. Citizens comments are welcome. At this time, and participants uh, will have up to five minutes duration to discuss them. Seeing no um, no one who uh, no citizens comments at this time, then we're uh, going to go into work session. Would and be which is going to be executive session. Pardon? Which is going to be the executive yeah, session. Yeah, but I, and which because of the items to be covered. We have to go into executive session. It is recommended that the board go into executive session at this time to discuss the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of an employee, conducting or reviewing negotiations or bargaining sessions with employees, or matters required to be kept confidential by the federal law or rules of the state statutes. So moved. Second. We moved and second that we go to uh, vote to go into executive session, Mr. Adams. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mrs. Farola. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Ms. Terry. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes.
Good evening. I would uh, like to call to order the Springfield Local Schools Board of Education. We have to come out of executive. We, no, we came out of executive. We have to adjourn from the work session. Ooh. That's all right. All right. So, so I'm going to adjourn at 6.02. I need a motion to adjourn the work we'll make session. Motion. Also, okay. It gets confusing. I get it. Uh, Hofer Ray. It's going to be Mr. Hofer, Mr. Ray. Uh, look, Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mrs. Frola. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Terry. Yes. Okay. Now we can. Let me give me a minute to get into my uh, the six o'clock meeting. All right, here we go. Should be good. Okay, ready to go. Okay. Yep. I apologize. No, that's all right. All right, let's try this again. Uh, the uh, calling to order the Springfield Local Board of Education meeting for May 16, uh, 2023, Mr. Adams. Ms. Terry. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Here. Mrs. Frola. Here. Mr. Ray. Here. Mr. Petrie. Here. At this time, we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sure. Um, Ms. Warner, do we have uh, Mrs. Weiss here? Oh, I, I, oh my gosh, I did not even see you over there. So, um, would you like to talk a little bit about? Sure. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. I didn't even see you there. I am so sorry. So, Mr. Boswell has some pictures that we can put up on the screen, and we can sort of talk about it. Um, is there one that's before that, Mr. Boswell, that should say thirty? Uh, maybe not. Okay, that's fine. Leave it there. We'll just wing it. So, um, first of all, thank you for inviting me, and I brought a student along. Oh, I brought Allison along, so we'll talk about this. Um, Allison was one of seven who participated in the 35th Annual Holocaust and Genocide Writing and Visual Arts Contest that is open to all of Summit County, public and private schools. Um, once I submitted them, I found out that Springfield 35 years ago was one of the first schools to participate. And we participated again and we, we did awesome. <laughs> I'm so happy for that. So I chose my Art 3 students. Um, I picked seven of them to send their work. And out of that seven, I was, goodness gracious, so happy and so proud that all seven play something on the county level. So um, I'll back up a little bit. So Art 3 students for Art 3, it is their first semester of <coughs> art where they're actually in my class all semester. Foundations of Art 1 and 2, they're just in my class for nine weeks. And it's really a foundational class, building skills. How do I use pencils? How do I mix paint? How do I use oil pastels? Once they come to Art 3, now they're going to draw upon all those skills that they practice in Art 1 and Art 2 and put their own voice into the art. Um, when I came across this contest, at first, I can't say I was 100%. I was a little hesitant because of the topic is such a heavy topic. The topic is how do you visually show the horrors of the Holocaust? And being an art teacher of big kids for just one year and an art teacher of little kids for 29 years, I thought this is a really heavy topic. Art one and art two, we're making pretty things. We're learning how to mix colors and paint flowers. Now they're coming to me and I'm asking them, how do you respectfully show six million people were murdered? It's a heavy topic. Um, ultimately, I wrestled with it. And then I decided, this is what they're learning in history class. This is unfortunately what is happening in Ukraine right now. This is a topic that I should give them a voice to represent themselves. So the theme for this year's contest was, lest we forget, 
So all of what they wanted to visually say had to show in some way why we shouldn't forget. The theme was chosen um, because there are less and less first generation Holocaust survivors. Holocaust survivors now are in their late 90s, so there is less of them to say to younger people, this is what can happen. So I, when they came to Art 3, I said, here's our topic. It's a heavy topic. And I'm going to let you decide how you want to present your work. It could be a painting. It could be a drawing. It could be 3D. You have utter control now on what you want to say. And for their work ethic and how seriously they took the topic makes me as a teacher so proud. So very, very proud. So as you can see, um, we kind of, with the exception of second place, really swept awards this year. Jenna received um, first place. She won $234. Leah Odom received third place. She did a painting, you'll see shortly, she received $90. Zion Snyder, fourth place, um, she received $36. We'll talk about in a minute why the dollar amounts are how they are. Um, Jesse Stevens, Allison Rowley, who's here tonight, um, the Carson Jones, and Haley Milhone all received an honorable mention. Um, they were all invited, they all wish they could come, but there's some sports and some softball games and some things where they couldn't be here tonight. So if you could be so kind, Mr. Boswell. So the monetary prizes are given in multiples of 18, which is symbolic of giving life. So I think that's actually really beautiful. So if you want to flip to the photos, um, is there any way to dim the lights? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Just might be a little hard to see. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, that's so much better. Thank you. So this is Jenna's. So Jenna received first place, and she decided what she wanted to portray was um, one of the Jewish people sent to the concentration camp. And you can see that they are blindfolded in a cross. It says, remember. They are wearing um, the symbolic flower. Uh, he is wearing the uniform with a number and all the um, souls in the background behind him also have their numbers. So it is showing, um, unfortunately, the millions of people that lost their lives. So when they created their art, um, they also needed to write about it. So this combined with their learning in language arts class, um, I thought this was really important. Besides this, which um, they also on the back had to create a works cited page for every website that they visited, for every photo, um, they would cite that on the back to say this is where I received my information. So this is um, third place, Leah Odoms. This is called Drowning in Remembrance. Um, it's a little hard to see in the picture there, but I think if you flip to the next one, you can read what her thinking here. And what we can do too is we can put the slideshow on our website. Oh, so, perfect. So people can go through it and read it. Would love that. Okay. okay, so she decided to do a painting. Zion Snyder. Zion told me that when she was in the sixth grade, part of her language arts class was to read the diary of Anne Frank. And she said, when I read that diary, it really stuck with me because she was the same age that I was in the sixth grade. And I just couldn't imagine somebody my age going through what she went through. So Zion took part of the diary and stained the board that you see to look like an old book and wrote an excerpt um, from Anne Frank's diary. And then she cut out and researched all the faces, glued them onto the Star of David, then whitewashed it so they would look like memories, like they were faded. Thought it was really beautiful.
Haley Milhone. Haley wanted to incorporate um, a 3D aspect. Um, I have to say in my 30 years, this was the first time I learned how to make barbed wire. So we took some thin gauge wire and a drill and spun it together and we, we made barbed wire. And her theme was she wanted to make the history books come to life that this isn't just something you read about, that this actually happened. Jesse Stevens, so Jesse did a collage combined with painting. Um, it is a little hard to see. All those small black and white images are paintings to look like souls. And here's Allison. So when Allison initially did her sketch, and she showed me that uh, she wanted to use uh, that symbol, my initial reaction was, oh, that is such a powerful symbol. And what she then said she wanted to do was to put the lives of the Jewish people inside the symbol to visually show this is what they took that symbol took their lives. Um, then it took on a new meaning for me. And then the background is newspapers um, that talked about the horrors of the Holocaust. Uh, this is a pencil drawing combined with a collage. Um, Carson Jones, she wanted to show that it wasn't just men who were sent to the concentration camps. So she wanted to depict a young woman. Uh, about a week and a half ago, they honored um, the students at the Akron Main Library with a really, really nice presentation. Their art was on display. Their art has actually been on display at the main library for over a month. Now it's going to go to the government building in Akron. So if you just want to flip through those, Mr. Boswell, that just shows their art the night of the presentation. And there we all are. <laughs> so thank you so much for having us. No, thank you. Thank you for all that hard work. I mean, I mean truly, what a, what a powerful True. lesson. And to incorporate all the different other content areas into that, just phenomenal. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Comment on that? Go, go, please do. I had an uncle that uh, served in World War II. He was in a transportation unit, and they overran some concentration camps. So when people say nowadays that didn't happen, it did happen. Unfortunately, he, fortunately, he took a bunch of pictures, brought them home. I never knew my grandfather, and my grandfather found Ed's pictures from the war and from the concentration camps. And you say it's a, it's a heavy subject, and it is very much so. It bothered my uncle, my grandfather so much, he burned him. And my uncle said to his dad, my grandfather, Pop, how am I supposed to tell people 50 years down the road that will now deny it later? And, and here we are, people across the world are denying that that happened, and it did happen. He was there. My dad verified that those pictures were taken. So thank you. It's a heavy subject, but it, it happened in history. Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. All right, Miss um, Warner, you're up next. So I'm here again on a monthly basis to um, share Student of the Month from the National Honor Society. 
We have teachers who write up nominations. The names are taken off, the names of the student, and our National Honor Society students vote on who should be um, recognized for the high school and the junior high. So we're gonna start with Connor. Connor, will you come on up? Connor, this is what Mrs. King wrote about you. Connor works hard every day and he wants to truly understand the material in class. He consistently pays attention and answers questions. He asks questions if he needs something clarified. Connor is always pleasant and respectful. Again, nominated by Mrs. King. So this picture is posted as you walk into the building. It will move down by the community room for the rest of the school year. I have a copy for you, as well as your certificate that says you're a student of the month. Congratulations. <laughs> Our junior high recipient is not here this evening, that's correct, right? But I will read the nomination. This is for Prajwal Jiri, and it says, Prajwal is a fantastic student. In eighth grade math class, he completes all of his work, works diligently, and participates daily. In addition, he is kind to his peers and his teachers. Prajwal is a great example of what it means to be a Spartan, nominated by Mrs. Baldinger. So this will also be displayed in the building, and I will get to this to the student tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, and this is our last one for the year. Hard to believe that, that this is uh, May and the school year is almost done. And, and thank you, you know, for doing this in the student council. And, and Mrs. Weiss, thank you so much uh, for letting our kids find different other outlets to really express themselves. We got so many great things going on here at Springfield, and I'm happy that we're able to share them. Any further comments on? I, I have. I, I want to say to the students, those who are here and those who participated, uh, you have my respect for your combining of creativity, compassion, and history to continue educating everyone about this event that um, could be forgotten but isn't because of of the work that uh, the youth is doing through the Holocaust. So thank you for doing that. And again, you have my admiration uh, because I know that this wasn't an easy thing to do since it was three-pronged and it was the literature, the writing, and so forth. So, awesome. uh, and thank you, Mrs. Weiss. Thank you. Okay. I don't have anything. Hmm? I'm, I'm just impressed, that's all. That's all I have. It's very good. On board members informal. Pardon? We're on board members informal, I take it. Yeah. Can we get to Yeah, they kind of yeah. blended okay. it. Yeah, I think we just blended it right out. Great. Um, when, uh, spring sports is wrapping up. I know, Shelly, you'll update us. Uh, I, I attended a girls' softball game the other day. Boy, is it fun. You know, and, and when I went to school, my school didn't have uh, girls' softball at the time. So my wife played softball, so I got introduced to a whole new sport. So the other game last week, there was three in the park home runs, two by one that's uh, Destiny, and the other one, uh, and I'm texting my wife, and she's like, who is it? And I'm like, this number, and oh yeah, that's this person. Exciting game, it always moves. Uh, best of luck to the Lady Spartans. Um, I will talk about evaluations from Slack. Um, in, in my line of work, of all the companies I've worked for, all, all of them except one has always had uh, evaluations done. Um, the companies I've worked for are Parker Hannifin, CNW Services, Eaton, St. Cobain, and even a union company a long time ago that I worked for. My very first stop was Kent Latex. And they've always wanted, the management always wanted to know what the heartbeat of the employees were. So I read these. But I will also say, you need more than 26 in participating. Uh, it's kind of like the Olympics. I'll read something, and if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, like you're attacking somebody that has, they don't like your dress uh, for a, 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 uh, somebody that dresses, I toss that immediately. Uh, 
pretty professional. I read them. I put a lot of weight into them. I've read them almost every year that I've been on the board. And I do observe. Observation, you can make a lot of observations when I walk through the buildings. I don't have to say anything. And so uh, this, this year, one of them was a little skewed more than I but anticipated. By instantly looking at it, I knew it was skewed. So if you're going to write an evaluation, make it truthful and make it good, and I'll still read them next year. Uh, I don't have anything else. I would like to say that I was very honored to participate in the Top 25 banquet that just happened recently. Uh, congratulations to Mrs. Warner and, and Michelle Hanna, who did an outstanding job planning the event. And uh, it's one of my favorite activities in the entire year. So I was very honored to be a part of it, and thank you for the invitation. Another celebration that I became aware of was that Michael Beard, one of our students in the plumbing program at PLCC, was part of a four-man team who took a third place in the Skills USA team competition in Columbus. So uh, congratulations to he and his other team members. There were four, four guys on the team. Other, the other kids were from different schools, but I thought it would be nice to celebrate Michael a little bit. It's awesome. <clears throat> Okay, uh, item number seven, approval of minutes. It is recommended that the board approve the minutes of the special sorry, of the special meeting uh, work session of April 17th, the regular meeting of April 18th, and the special meeting of April 24. And those uh, exhibits have been presented to the board. So moved. Second. Mr. Adams. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mrs. Frola. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Ms. Terry. Yes. Motion passed. At this time, um, we have no, uh, time for citizens' comments on agenda items. Citizens are welcome to comment on any of the agenda items at this time, and uh, there is a five-minute uh, time limitation, but you're welcome to comment. Is there anyone who wants to? Okay, seeing none, then we will move to item number nine, which is the payment of monthly bills. It is recommended that the board approve payments of bills for the month of April pending audit. And again, that is an exhibit that has been presented to the board. So moved. I'll second. It's been moved and second, Mr. Adams. Mr. Ray? Yes. Ms. Terry? Yes. Mr. Hofer? Yes. Ms. Frola? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Motion passed. Number 11, acceptance of, oh, sorry, number 10, payment of bills then and now. It is recommended that the board approve a resolution for payments of bills per, per Ohio Revised Code Section 5705.21. So moved. All second. Uh, question, is this for our students attending EA that would have attended our school district, and we defer them to EA? What was your question? I'm sorry. No, it's... Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I thought. Yes. So you lost me there for a half a second. Just a half a second. It's, not, it's <laughs> okay. It's, uh, it's okay. And I thought, well, maybe I didn't make myself clear. No, you made yourself I was just, like, not there. All right, Mrs. Farola? Yes. Ms. Terry? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Mr. Hofer? Yes. Okay. Motion passed. Number 11, acceptance of the financial reports is recommended that the board uh, accept the financial reports from the treasurer for April 2023. These are exhibits four, five, and six that have been provided to the board. 
I'll make a motion. I'll second. Men moved in second, Mr. Adams. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Mrs. Frola. Yes. Ms. Terry. Yes. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Okay, motion passed. Moving on to personnel, it is recommended that the board accept or approve the following personnel items. 12.1 is a resignation. Accept the resignation of assistant track coach James Branchick, effective April 28, 2023. 12.2 resignation. Accept the resignation of intervention specialist tutor Catherine McPeters, effective August 18, 2023. 12.3, resignation. Accept the resignation of classified substitute Karen Hall, effective May 10, 2023. 12.4 is release from employment of a certified staff member. Approve a release from employment with Springfield Local Schools due to a reduction in force for financial reasons. The following certified employee effective for the 2023-24 20, 20, 20, school year, and that is Joyce Housley. 12.5 is employment. Employ Carol Simmons as a classified substitute per the negotiated agreement pending proper licensure, effective the first day assigned. 12.6, employment. Employ Ashley Fraley as a 100% music teacher per the negotiated agreement pending proper licensure effective 2023-24. 12.7, employment. Employ Elizabeth Kreitz as a 100% art teacher per the negotiated agreement pending proper licensure effective for the 2023-24 school year. 12.8, ESY teacher. Employ the following certified personnel to work extended school year, summer 2023, pending sufficient students enrollment at an hourly rate of 28.25, up to a maximum of 64 hours to be paid from federal funds. Those teachers are Melanie Smithers, Sheila Wright, half time, uh, Sheila would be half time June 13 through 16 and June 27 through 30. Michael Lenhart, half time June 6 9 and June 2023. 20, Jennifer Gray, Mary Beth Mitchell, Stacy Pendergast, and that's a as needed, and Katie Dacus as a speech therapist. And ESY, or Extended uh, School Year Aids, employ the following classified personnel to work extended school year summer 2023, pending sufficient student enrollment at an hourly rate of $14.57 up to a maximum of 56 hours to be paid from federal funds. And those employees are, uh, potential employees are Vicki Kirby, Meredith w Williams, Rodney Bowen, Tracy Cole, Kathy Ray, Juliana Perez, and Nancy Ahrens. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Um, a couple things. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, I was going to I knew you were eager to be with her. <laughs> um, Catherine McFeeters, um, she resigned her position. She has been with us for uh, six years, and she worked as a uh, special education uh, uh, tutor in our department. So she will be uh, missed. Um, Joyce Housley, she's one of our reading tutors when we ripped the positions last um, board meeting. Uh, she, we just wanted to put a name to, to the oh. position. It was going to be two positions, but because of resignations and moving around, 
uh, we have it down to one. Oh, that's good. So, um, okay, I know this is what you want to talk about. So Ashley, who's here, thank you, and Libby, both of them had left us, and I am just talking with both Ashley and, and, and Libby both, how excited and um, thrilled they are to come back to Springfield as it's people want to come home. And Ashley, uh, I know you had shared with me that this had been your dream job since you've been in uh, eighth grade band. So um, I am excited for both Ashley and Libby to be back joining us and uh, I'm excited. So, and thank you already for stepping up and helping out. We saw you at the band concert and, and so it was really good. Go ahead. Well, that's okay. I just, you know, I'm as, uh, as someone who worked with them for formerly worked with him for a long time. Uh, I'm delighted to have both of them return because they're both quality teachers. I was blessed with a lot of quality teachers. And I'm so. trying to bring them on back. Huh? I'm yeah. I'm trying to bring them back. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of them, but I'd like to bring some back, yes. So. I just want to say congratulations. Um, when my daughter, when she got, when she left, my daughter cried. Oh. She's on, what, she was in fourth grade? Doesn't even have <laughs> Um, when we found out that she was back, I th think Danny was in the car and I had to tell her to shut up, you can't <laughs> say anything. And it was, it's, I'm very excited for, her. I'm not a musical person, so I'm very excited for those gifted kids that have that talent, so welcome back. Okay. And, and Ashley, you know, I talked to her and she knows what, how I feel about bands, so we've got some, uh, we got some great things going on for that. Yeah, I'm and excited for this. I'm kids. excited, and, and it was great at the uh, at the um, band concert. Who was the band director that had retired? That came to see Donna Bithy. Donna Bithy. She came. She thought she. I was talking yeah. with her, and she introduced herself to me. And she said, "Yeah, she said, how could I miss Ernie's last concert? She said, I thought this was going to be my last band concert, but now I got to keep coming because Ashley's going to be here." So. Just keep pulling me back in. This is a sign from the Godfather. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Thank you. I'm excited. We have to vote. Did we? No, we have to vote, vote on it. We huh? have to vote. Mr. Hofer, did you second? Oh, 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 hold on. I'm not done yet. Sorry. Oh. ESY. Do you want to explain just a little bit about what ESY is for people who might not understand? So ESY is it's extended school year. Um, students that might make need extra time during the school year so they don't lose progress on their IEP goals are given the opportunity to come to ESY during the summer. The teachers make it light and fun because obviously the kids have already done a full school year. So I, they work, the teachers work really hard to make it more of like a camp, fun, laid back, but still rich learning for the kids to give them a little bit of extra time to master some of those skills and to give them not as much time to lose some of that time during the summer slides. So um, I'm very thankful for the teachers and the teaching assistants that have signed up to teach that because it's also extended time for them to work, but they're excited and they've been talking and planning and working with each other to make some fun activities for the kids. And where's it going to be at? Um, K through 2 will be here at the preschool center, and 3 through 12 will be over at Shrop. So, and, and very dedicated, the, the teachers, yes. uh, with the kids. Yeah, so, so. Um, and then Mrs. Dacus is a former speech therapist for Springfield, and she always comes back and helps me out in the summer, so I'm super appreciative of that, too. Awesome, thank you. All right, I'm done now. Are you sure? I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ms. Terry. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mrs. Brol. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, number thirteen: approval of graduates. Ooh. It is recommended that the board approve a, the 2023 seniors listed in Exhibit 7 to receive a diploma for the Springfield High School after having met all the requirements as set forth by the State of Ohio and the Springfield Board of Education. And we have been uh, provided a list of uh, those graduates. I'll make a motion. 
I'll second. And what an exciting, what what an exciting thing to have on a board agenda. Yep. This is you know 12 years. Feels like it went fast. Yes, a bit, very fast. So and and Miss Warner, thank you, you know, for all your hard work at the high school for getting our kids out to their second stage of their life. So thank you. Miss Terry. Yes. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mrs. Frola. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Motion passed, and congratulations to them. Yes. Number 14, OPC, number 179, letter of intent. It is recommended that the board approve a letter of intent with OPC 179 regarding teacher assistance supervising students in a classroom in circumstances where the regular school classroom teacher is absent and where the district has been unable to secure a substitute teacher. And a copy of the uh, le letter of intent has been provided to us. So moved. Second. And then this was, uh, we had discussed this before, so this was mm -hmm. something that uh, uh, we had a discussion about. Mm -hmm. Mr. Adams? Mr. Petrie. Yes. Ms. Terry. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Hofer. Yes. Mrs. Farrell. Yes. And, and let me just, uh, well, I said that we had a discussion about that. This is something that we discuss in executive session. And when we go to executive session, we know that there's no, um, no action taken. So, and it comes back to the board meeting to have the action to be out into the public. So, um, thank you. Number 15 is five-year forecast update. It is recommended that the board approve the five-year forecast update. Mr. Adams, do you have? Do you want a motion or something? Mary? Oh. Do you want a motion? Do I'll make a motion. Second motion emotion before you talk about it. Or do you want to do it before? Yeah, this is going to be my presentation for both, and I want, if Mary could, hit the lights before I go up there and talk about the numbers, because I want to talk about just something that's important to me and important to everybody that works with me in this building. So, yeah, give me a motion in a second, and then I'll talk about the forecast. I made a motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. You know what I'm talking about? These are just signatures. You know, when the treasurer gets up and speaks, most people fall asleep. It's not like what we get to see, but uh, every morning when I come in here, you ask me, that's a picture of me and my preschool buddies, and, and it really has, uh, it's had a profound impact on me. I, I, I think I should have known this, and my dad was an elementary a principal and teacher, but uh, this is the reason why we're here. When you look at these little kids, it is our obligation for the next 13 years or 14 years of their life to give them the best opportunities that they deserve uh, because they're going to compete eventually with other kids. But uh, I do. You can see my face. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy being around them. I try not to disrupt the teachers. So what I do is when I hear the bus pull up, I walk out of my office and I give these little kids a high five. It started out with just a little guy to my right. If you can see him, he's a little spitfire. He, he started the trend and that little shy girl there on the left with her head down, I even got her. And that was hard because she did not want to high five me. And now we have about 20 kids that line up every morning and that's my 10 seconds of grinning from year to year. But it's more important to understand that when I come to work, I work for them. That's why we're all here. And uh, I think we need to understand that. And, and I, we understand that. I think the community need to understand what these little kids do. And all kids, all children. But these ones right here, I mean, they're just starting out. Okay, let's talk about the five-year forecast. If we can just kind of expand a little bit. Every year, uh, by state code, I have to release two five-year forecasts, one in October and one in, I 
things for these kids, so it's very important that you vote. Any questions from the board or anybody else in the audience? Another thing is, uh, as far as uh, people that are looking at this report, we are now under fiscal watch, so not only the normal state auditors that appear in my office once a year, we now have a wonderful group of individuals based out of Columbus, there's three to be exact, that I've been working with a lot lately, multiple times a week, to go over, and I had them look at the forecast, and it, we tweaked it a little bit, but the big change is more the verbiage on the assumptions. Uh, I look at them as uh, they're helping, and it's kind of nice. Uh, and, and I think they realize that I appreciate their help, and. Springfield, uh, we need all the eyes we can, we can get. Kind of reminder, Monday, May 22nd at 5.30, here in this same place, we're having our second finance committee. I encourage people that live in the community, bring a friend, ones that came last time, bring, bring a neighbor. I have plenty of uh, information and folders uh, for people that couldn't attend. Uh, I keep it short, 5.30 to 7. Uh, it's very informative, and there's two parts to it that I think is important. You don't want me standing up talking for 25, 30 minutes just on numbers. What we're doing is we're listening to the people out there. Give us some hard questions. Tell us the stuff you hear. And we can tell you if it's true or not true by the facts. But some of the questions can be difficult because they're not really they're just opinions or they're challenging what we're doing. That's okay. Uh, I got thick skin. But, but I appreciate it. I met with some of the teachers. It was very nice uh, to sit down and discuss items. And I wish I could have more time to do it, but that's one of my goals is to get out there and talk to uh, as many people as I can about their concerns. That's it. Thank you. Well, could you? We didn't vote yet. Did we? we have a motion and a second. We can vote. Yes. Ms. Terry? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Mrs. Frola? Yes. Mr. Hofer? Yes. Thanks. Yes. Motion passed. Uh, number 16, certified corporate resolution. It is recommended that the board approve a certified corporate resolution authorizing the treasurer to accept, convey, assign, transfer, or otherwise dispose of all or any shares, stocks, bonds, debentures, debitor stock, and 
other securities as necessary, and we've been provided with. I'll explain it after we go okay. a second. What this is, I'll make a motion to accept. Okay. I'll second that. It's kind of funny. Uh, we have a safe in our office that's as old as dirt, and so is the information that's in there. We have board records that go back to 1883. So we were going through it, and I, we pulled out this document from a from a company in Canada that we own shares, Sun Life. And I went, "What the heck is this?" <laughs> You know, it's, we've never seen it before. It's not on my financial records. It's not a ton of money, but it's $30,000, you know. So we looked into it, and sure enough, at one point in time, way, way, way long time ago, the treasurer must have, through his investments, invested in this company. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But we couldn't find when this investment was ever noted in our assets, which you'd think would do that, you know? No auditor ever, well, how would they? It's, it, this thing was stuffed in our safe. So what we did is we sold it. Uh, and uh, we're putting it in the bank, you know? We're not, we're not spending on anything, but it was it's a first for me. You know, it was almost like discovering a wad of cash in your safe that you don't even know it's in there. So, <coughs> but this was an old insurance document with our share totals. We contacted them. Sure enough, they said, yep, you can sign it. But I never had a resolution to be able to do that. So that's the purpose of this resolution. That, well, there's nothing else in that safe because we went through that safe tooth and nail. So. Wow. But we do. It's amazing. We have documents, I think, back to the 1800s relating uh, our school. How much we pay for the land. I mean, it's ridiculous. Like $28 and something like that. Well, that's interesting. Any, yeah. Where would we put that money then? What fund will that go that's into? And how we that fund goes into the general fund. The general fund. That's it. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Mr. Terry? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Mr. Hofer? Yes. Mrs. Frola? Yes. Thank you. Motion passed. That's Number 17, donations. It is recommended that the board accept a donation of $220 from Angela Cantor from a GoFundMe for the high school music department. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second, Mr. Adams. Mr. Hofer? Yes. Mr. Petrie? Yes. Ms. Terry? Yes. Mrs. Frola? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. You could skip me and go on to central office report. Good evening. A couple things that I'd like to update you on. First one being the Spartan Snack Pack program that has been providing uh, meals to um, children in need on Friday afternoons to kind of bridge that gap between school days there. That program has uh, been going on since mid-March um, there when a large donation of food items from Maranatha was able to help get it uh, back off the ground. At that time in mid-March we were serving 70 students. Um, that number has grown to this week we will um, provide the program will provide packs to 119 students. So we were planning on up to 125, so we're, we're coming very close to that number. Um, and, you know, looking forward to continuing this program. In um, mind of continuing it, the program also just received a grant from the um, Rao Charitable Organization, a, um, a trucking company in Green that um, they have a charitable arm there and they provided a grant for $1,500 to the program to help sustain it. So we're thankful for that um, grant there and, and the ability to keep that program moving on into, into next year there. So um, noted that. And then also um, another item that Maranatha has assist, assisted us with and uh, Miss Terry got this moving with, um, was talking to them and they came out a week or so ago and replaced the dugout benches at two of the fields here 
on this property there that were in um, pretty rough conditions. So um, they came in and replaced those right down to um, bringing in an auger and putting new foundations in. So they did a great job. We're very appreciative. Thank you, Brian. They did a great job. The Dawson family led that. Um, they have some graduates. I think they graduated too. So wow. mm -hmm. one day we had our eyes closed. The next day we opened them, and there they were. Magic. Amazing. <laughs> Wish my kids would do that. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, from my office, first and foremost, congratulations to the graduates who will be walking across the stage coming up very soon. It's the goal of every educator in this district to watch you walk across because your celebration is part of our celebration because we've been cheering for you the entire time. Um, in my office, things are getting very busy, doing federal, closing out federal grants and doing federal grant audits, as well as in testing because we are starting to receive test scores back, so we'll get updated on that as we continue through. Um, but other than that, I just hope that our students have a fantastic summer, participate in activities out there that will keep you learning, whether it's making recipes with your parents or reading books or going to the library and doing their summer program activities, that'd be fantastic. It's a great, fun way to continue your learning process and to help eliminate summer slide. Thank you. Hey, a couple things. Um, first, as um, spring sports are winding down, so our softball team did play today. They played a uh, uh, Cloverleaf. Cloverleaf, I know we got with the C. Um, unfortunately, we did lose one to zero. Today, uh, uh, Kevin says that uh, Cloverleaf's pitcher was just spot on. Uh, but our girls gave a gum ho. So if we, we have a game tomorrow and then we have a game Thursday, I think. And if we win both those games, then we could share the math championship. And we play Cloverleaf tomorrow. And we play Cloverleaf tomorrow. We've beat them once already. And uh, uh, when we saw the girls taking off today, because they had to go play up in Parma, they were, they were, they were, I mean, they were, they were excited they were there, so. Um, but what a, and, and it's a young team, so they're going to be back again next year. So we're excited about that. Um, let's see um, the JV baseball. So I went to a um, you know one of my duties is sports too. So I had to go to a OHSA. Um, it was like a two-hour-long meeting, and it's just things that they wanted to vote on. And one of the things that they talked about was sportsmanship, and that we need to have more, um, you know, as a team, as a district, as a state, to be more consistent with our sportsmanship from our, from our students, from our parents, from our, from our coaches, from our fans. And no sooner did that happen, we got an email, and, and I'm gonna tell you, we have gotten quite a few of these emails from officials about our teams. And this one was about uh, um, our JV baseball team. And it says, um, it says, um, the JV um, umpire writes, I thought I was done with sportsmanship reports for the season, but in Saturday's JV game, the way the coaching staff and players conducted themselves during the game exceeded expectations. We had a little kerfuffle, love that word, at the beginning of the game over a misunderstanding of where the dugout actually ended. And we kept after the Springfield staff to get in the dugout and Coach Bray said in a good natured way, I'm in the dugout. He did move, but my partner and I figured out later that the Orville head coach didn't effectively communicate the dead ball territory on the Springfield side of the field, which led to the confusion. I had a few interactions with the coaching staff at first base box and those guys were so upbeat and positive that I couldn't help but notice how exceptional they were in relating to their players and in teaching them to respect the game. I thought the way that the players conducted themselves on the field also exceeded expectations. They were polite, respectful, each of each, ugh, respectful of each other and their opponent. I don't keep track of the score and I can't remember if they won or lost the game, but their demeanor and respect for the game was very encouraging to me. So, you know what, it's always great when we get uh, reports like that about our sports teams and that they, they represent Springfield well. So that was exciting. Um, I was at that game. Um, both teams were really, the Orville uh, has a very good catcher. He's already committed <coughs> to Kent State. Um, it was hot, it was a beautiful day, but they got it in, but it was funny to see because Coach Bray, if you, ever, if you don't know Coach Bray, is very flamboyant. Uh. And um, 
it was it's nice to hear because it has been a rough season for them mm -hmm. and they cheer each other on no matter what so and they're winning right now nine to one that's awesome and it's a young team also very young team all freshmen so much. we have really high hopes mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me for them also um let's see what else <clears throat> the spartan track team finishes the regular season Oh, well, they did it um, a couple nights ago, and then we're off to um, the MAC Championships. Our top placer for the boys was Peyton Carney with the second place finish in the 3200. And the top places for the girls were Grace uh, Frank, 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 thank you, with a, with a fifth place uh, finish in the 3200. Man, our kids like to run, don't they? Mm -hmm. And a relay team of Riley Moon and Kayla Gasper, Victoria Akers, and Heidi Hellman, who also took fifth place in the 4x4. Four Again, another long running. So our kids are doing an amazing job with that. And my last thing is we are going to be marching in the Springfield and Lake Moore's uh, Memorial Day Parade this year. Are you helping out? Okay, I didn't tell you this, but I will also be marching with you. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you guys get... Do you need, do you need a band shirt? Or you I would love a band shirt, band? please. Thank you. Um, the the, um, the uh, uh, parade starts at 11 o'clock. So um, they actually worked with us in moving it. The parade's always been at one o'clock. It's always been a little bit of a, a kerfuffle, I like that word, um, when we're marching it, but they moved it back to 11, so we're excited. So that will be, and if anybody wants to ride in it, just get a hold of uh, Lakemore and uh, get a car with your own signage. That's why I'm walking, because I'm not doing my car <laughs> and driving. So uh, um, they're looking for people. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you. All right, items worthy of your note. On May 22nd, Senior Awards at 9 a.m. at the Springfield Assembly of God. May 25th, High School um, Awards at 8.30 for the 9th grade, 9.30 for the 10th grade, 12.30 for the 11th grade. And those will be held in the audit auditorium. May 29 is Memorial Day, no school. May 31, preschool graduation at 10 a.m. at the Springfield Assembly of God. June 2nd, Junior Awards Assembly, 8 o'clock in the auditorium. June 2nd, oh geez, they're gonna be so disappointed with this. Students last day, <laughs> <laughs> end of the fourth quarter, uh, and end of the second semester. And on June 2nd, graduation at E.J. Thomas Performing Arts Center. And June 5th is the teacher's last day. And oh, they're the, disappointed and, too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what? Um, and just, just to, to add another date on there that I will be emailing you on, is we're probably gonna need another special board meeting to uh, make sure that we um, approve all the teachers that we couldn't get in today oh. and everything. So I want to get that on the books before our good hires that we have. Might want to go somewhere else, but you're here, you don't have to worry about it. But we've got some other good ones that uh, we want to lock in. So I will give you some dates within the next two weeks. We have two more to announce oh, on June 5th. That's okay. Special Board of Education meeting. This is a public meeting as required by our uh, outlined in Ohio Revised Code, public meeting for retire, rehire, uh, and that will be at 6 p.m. here at the uh, administration building. And on June 27th, next regular board meeting uh, at 6 p.m., and that is here, and as uh, Shelley just said, they'll be a special announcement. Oh, oh, we might just do it on the June 5th one if we can, since we've already got a meeting scheduled. We just have to uh, uh, redo the... Uh, yeah. Agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So that way then you don't have to come in another day. Sounds good. Okay, anything? All right, at this time, <coughs> citizens' comments are welcome. Uh, if anyone wishes to uh, participate in citizens' comments, now is the time. <laughs> we heard it. Oh, oh, oh. oh, we heard it. We heard that. 
horses get older, they stand up. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Tina Hartong. For those of you who don't know me, um, I teach seventh grade language arts and life skills to our Springfield students, and I've been a part of Springfield for over 26 years now. It's crazy. Um, I'm honored to be here tonight as the new president of our teachers union. As we begin this new chapter together, I want to express my enthusiasm and opportunity to collaborate with all of you to improve conditions for teachers and students. As educators, we sh all share the common goal of providing the best possible education for our kids. However, we also understand that achieving this goal requires a supportive and collaborative environment for our teachers. Teachers who are well supported and valued are better able to provide high quality instruction and support for our students. Um, when Superintendent Monachino came to our first day, we all met her for the first time. One of the very first things she told us in that auditorium was how many people told her that the teachers in Springfield were awesome. And that felt really good to uh, be acknowledged that way. Um, I agree 100%. My, my own children go to another district and I would put our teachers up against anyone. We have amazing teachers. Um, as the leader of SLAC, I'm committed to working with you to create a more supportive and collaborative environment. Um, this means advocating for some of the most amazing people I've ever met, our teachers. Additionally, we recognize that our Springfield students deserve the best possible learning environment we can provide them. We believe that by collaborating with you all, we can create a more positive school culture that fosters student success and Springfield pride. Um, our kids deserve the best. <clears throat> As we move forward, I want to assure you that SLACT is committed to working collaboratively with the school board and administration to achieve our shared goals. Um, Mr. Hofer, I can assure you personally that our communication and voice will definitely improve. Um, thank you for your time, and I look forward to collaborating with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations on your new role. Any other citizens' comments? Hello, everybody. My name is Rick Knight. Uh, first of all, I want to say this. I've had over, we'll, we'll call it 25 years of children, grandchildren in these schools. Okay? I've been to these school offices two times with a complaint. So y'all doing something right. But my biggest complaint is this. My first question is to the board. How many teacher and staff do we have over here at shop? How many? Um, Approximately. About 40, about 40, about 42 teachers. Okay. Yeah, uh, teachers. Okay, so what, it, what this is all about is your dress code policy. It is very, very underwritten. Now, what this pertains to is my grandson was wearing this shirt. <coughs> you like that? Represents World War II. Simple plan. He was told it was by a teachers, by three different teachers, that this is not allowed. I want you, according to you, the policies that are written, show me what's offensive on that shirt, according to the policies. Anybody? What was the student? Huh? What was the student or guiding? What was the what? What was, what was the issue with the uh, shirt? The student had the shirt and the teacher said it was inappropriate. Okay, but I... Would you like to see it up first? No, I, I can see it. I just... It's a World War II. It's a World War II nose art. It's, um, it's, it's, I think it's what was used to be on bombers, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So it's got the, five bombers. So it's got the two girls the and then the bombs on the bottom. Oh, okay. So I, I, I think probably what, being that it is very patriotic, do you mind if I answer? No, go oh, ahead, please. Um, being that it's very patriotic and um, it's a fantastic shirt, I think, um, and I could be wrong, but I'm thinking that the teachers, the offensive part on it was the bombs 
that it represented weaponry? I believe it was twofold. The Go bombs ahead. and then on top of it, the dress that the women were wearing. Okay. So that was probably the reason. And, 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 I, and I'm not sure of what the dress <coughs> code policy says word for word, but what does it say? It does not state something to that effect. So our conversation was, okay. is that we need to relook at our dress policy okay. and be a little more explicit on items like that. Okay. Okay. And I just made that's why I made a note. As soon as you said dress code policy, I put that on there. So I will look into that and I will get back to you. Okay. Second thing mm -hmm. I'd like to address. Sure. I was informed that there was no written hard copy of your own dress code in the school office. Why? Everywhere that I've ever worked, been, or anything else. All policies are kept on the file. That's pretty important. If you're going to have policies that's going to be interact or acted by, what'd you say, 20 some odd individuals, they should be able to read what it's about. Sure. Done with that. Absolutely. Um, just out of curiosity, this is just, um, is our policy online? Our policy is. The, the this this the, particular the, one was Shroff, so I can't speak to all the policies, but yes, Shroff's policy is online. And that's okay, but it should also be an actual written copy somewhere in that office. Because as she said to me, I would have to see a paper copy of it to be able to read it. Okay. So, okay, you know. Or I have to go get my computer. Okay, okay. absolutely. Here again. I have two daughter-in-laws that are teachers. I know what the teachers go through. Some kids can be handfuls. Not mine, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. But I have also taught my grandkids, as I was taught, if you believe in something, say something. Question it. And this is very vague. If you even read your high school, which is a little more intense, mm -hmm. which it should be. It covers more than what the elementary does. Okay? Now, on to a lighter note. It just so happened I have a younger grandson at Shrop also. This all took place on Thursday that I had this fine meeting. <laughs> And what she didn't realize was that I pretty much knew what I was talking about when I walked in. Uh -huh. Okay, I'd already looked this all up. Okay, but yesterday, my 10-year-old grandson come home with a piece of paper that was part of his school activities. And ma'am, would you do me a favor? This is just ironic oh. that this took place. <laughs> that school uniforms. It's kind of funny because obviously I'm not the only one that's got this thought in regards to dress code and policies. Now, as far as a uniform going to school uniforms, not so much. Not so much. If we're going to go in that kind of a direction, let's make it simple. Plain shirts. No writing whatsoever. No pictures whatsoever. School colors. Right? Easy enough, right? Shouldn't be cost hardy. I'm not a rich person. Most of the school district here isn't. So, you know, all I'm asking is for the board to sit down and think in the lines of, a, of how we're told that we're here to educate our children and get them ready for society. By what? Telling them that their opinion's the only one that counts. Not good. If you're going to have rules, Go by the rules exactly, Sarah. 
not as we want. Here again, I understand what teachers go through. I appreciate what they go through. I was a problem child in school myself. I had never graduated because I was too hard headed. So, I'm just asking, Absolutely. please. Absolutely. We, we think this kind of. Absolutely. And okay. you know what, sir, and I will get into contact with you, and I, and I will share with you. That's all I can ask. Absolutely. That, that will be a summer project for us. Okay. All right. Oh, Thank and you. Let, me, let me also say this. Um, my own wife said to me, ah, oh, just leave it alone. Don't bother with it. It's not that important. No, it is important. That's what's going on now in the world. That everybody else sits back and goes, eh, whatever. Let somebody else handle it. That's why we're in the problems we're in. Okay? Thank you for your time. Like I said, I wasn't here to make any real harsh. I did get upset with the young lady. <laughs> I have a bad temper, but here again, like I said, this needs to be looked at. Absolutely. And we do appreciate you coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for coming in and bringing us that communication. It's important. It is important. What the community is thinking. Mm -hmm. Are there any other citizen comments? <clears throat> If there are none, then uh, do we have a motion for uh, adjournment? Can I say one other thing? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, board members, uh, administration, I sent out um, an update from Columbus on Legislative Day. Uh, if you, anybody wants to see that, sp, ho, sp underscore hofer, springfieldspartans.org. You'll see a lot of snapshots. It's a comparative of the governor's budget to what the House just passed. Uh, there's some winners, there's some losers. Um, base pay goes up for some. Uh, uh, transportation reimbursement goes up. There's a lot of things in the mix of that, so reach out to your senators and on the state, on the state Senate side before that becomes to fruition. So it's a detailed report, so my notes are in it. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. I'm oh, sorry I didn't throw that in. Okay. The board members informal. Anything else? I didn't mean to make one. You're ready. You're ready. Okay. You need a motion? I make a motion. Okay. Second. Second. <clears throat> okay. Mr. Petrie. Yes. Mr. Frola. Yes. Mr. Hover. Yes. Mr. Ray. Yes. Mr. Terry. Yes. I think I sent you a message.